what some may find odd, others love to eat. Since it's Hispanic Heritage Month, you might try something other than tacos and enchiladas. And tonight, Jesse Degollado is in the kitchen with an expert in bilingual bicultural studies, preparing what some may find hard to look at. That is until they take that first bite. A colorful kitchen reminiscent of Mexico became a classroom for a lesson in cultural cuisine, specifically lengua, yes, beef tongue. It can be high cuisine or it can be cuisine de la casa, family eating. Prepared in dishes around the world, UTSA professor emerita Ellen Rojas Clark says lengua costs under 20 bucks, but it used to be only a dollar or two. Because era la comida de los pobres. The poor, she says, could only afford to eat what no one else would. And they were so creative and innovative. Much like Clark is now, adding garlic cloves, peppercorn, bay leaves, and salt, wrapping it in Mexican pepper leaf, otherwise known as hoja santa, she grows in her garden, and then in aluminum foil before it goes in the crock pot. Cook it all night, get up in the morning, and it's ready to go. After removing the outer skin, there it is, tender homemade barbacoa, but all lengua. Oh, goodness. Look how tender it is. Uh -huh. It's very, t it just comes apart. It's actually very nutritious, and it has a wonderful, smooth, smooth, delicate flavor. Enhanced by a nice warm tortilla of your choice, and of course, plenty of pico de gallo. Yet it's more than the food and the flavor. It represents some of our culture and heritage. It reflects our history, how we were brought up, and where we were brought up, and what we like to eat. Clark suggests keeping an open mind when you try lingua, preferably more than once. And remember, the first time you prepare lingua, if you make it, it's authentic. But also be willing to experiment. This with mole. <gasps> I bet that would be good, right? Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. I'll eat just about anything with mole. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so sign me up. Is it, is it dinner time yet? Well, I know. It's, yes, it's we coming. Should. There it's is coming. such a history behind this dish. There is, there is. And would you believe we can thank the Mexican vaquero, Mexican cowboys, who would be the basically the drive the cattle up from Mexico mm -hmm. through Texas up to Fort Worth, although we had a stockyards here. And so who worked at the stockyards here in San Antonio? The people who lived on the west side. Mm. And so consequently, you know, n not to let anything go to waste. Oh, that's what yeah. I gotta say, mm -hmm. you know? That's when they started, well, of course, the cowboys would make the cabeza de vaca, which would be the barracoa, you know, that you would put in a pit. But of course, if you don't have a pit, you could boil it, that's one way to do it. Uh -huh. Although my father used to have my mother do it outside because he didn't like the smell. <laughs> Use the barbecue pit, don't bring it in here. But she is using a crock pot. How about that? And it, it's wonderful. The 2023 version. There you go. In fact, somebody noted, oh, look, just a very traditional Mexican kitchen and a crock pot. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stay up to date with the times. There you go. As Jesse does most of the time, she educates a lot of us here yeah. at KSAT. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to you. I said, I don't know if I've had lengua, but I love barbacoa. And you were telling me, essentially, it's the same thing. Exactly, exactly. You know, however you order your barbacoa, you know, a lot of people, cachete, you know, the cheeks, very tender meat, but you can also ask for the lengua. You know, and of course, as you saw when they opened it, it looks just like barbacoa, and that's what it is, because of course, it's the head of the cow, and that's the, bar the barbacoa. Now I know to be more specific in my order. <laughs> you can <laughs> yeah. be, you can be. So, Dr. Riojas Clark wrapped hers in Ojo Santa. Uh -huh, Ojo Santa. What, is, what, what exactly is that? Ojo Santa is called sacred leaf, or Mexican pepper leaf, or root beer plant. Go figure, oh. go figure. But it doesn't taste like root beer. It has a very faint aroma like root beer, uh -huh. but, uh, it, but it's hard to find sometimes. Mm. And so our gardening expert, Sarah Acosta, says mm -hmm. that perhaps it's best that you grow it. And you can get the seeds, but of course check with your nursery uh, or go online. Everything lives online. Yes. So uh, you can probably find the Oja Santa leaf seeds. But uh, she actually grew it in her garden. 
Oh. But the drought, of course, killed everything. Yeah. So yeah. we were lucky to find that little bit of sh that she did have survive, and that's what she used to wrap it, which I had never heard of this, but it was wonderful. And again, there's not an overpowering flavor. Nothing is overpowering. It's just that sweet, delicious flavor of this food, and of this meat. Would that be with a guy all just amazing? That's yeah. The best part, a little extra. <laughs> <laughs> what about actually finding lingua? Is that pretty easy? Well, actually, yes. Well, depending. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on, well, supposedly H-E-B uh, has them. Uh, they sometimes, like everything else, prices go up and down. She, I think you may have heard her say it, she bought some a while back and it was $40. $40. But then she found that one for 17 Oh. So, but of course you could always check with your neighborhood butcher. If you yeah. have a neighborhood butcher, you know, they still are out there. And so I'm sure they would, they could find you one. So what is your tactic when you want somebody to try barbacoa or lengua for the first time? <laughs> I know my tactic, but I don't know if that's suitable for everybody because I just tell them, just try it first and then I'll tell you what you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. Good strategy. Um, as she said, keep an open mind, Yeah, you know, uh, because, as, and she says, you know, maybe try it the first time, oh, mm, and I don't like it. Well, then try it again. Give it, give it another try. And then at that point, you can kind of maybe savor it without that initial reaction. So finally, the third time that you try it, you go, okay, maybe I do like it, or as, maybe I don't like it. As with anything <laughs> new, right? Give it a chance. Well, give yeah. It more than one chance. I mean, talk about impressing your friends from out of town or your family out of town. Guess what I made? Mm -hmm. And, or guess what I had to eat? Yeah. And they're probably going to go, you ate what? <laughs> But don't knock it until you've tried it. Yeah. And then try it with different salsas every time. That way you get a little bit of different taste. Mm. Or the mole. Fact, yeah. Or, or mole. the mole. Yes. Exactly. Or salsa verde. Yeah. Salsa, salsa verde. Salsa roja. The mm -hmm. possibilities are limitless. Jesse, thank you so much for being here. And thank it's just a pleasure always to have you, you in the studio. Thank you. And I know people want to know that recipe. So yes. you can scan this QR code, go find the recipe on ksat.com, and also watch the extended version. It's about a 30-minute cooking lesson well, conversation with you and Dr. Clark. And she is such she is such a great conversationalist. Yes. I mean, she just is wonderful to talk to. Just and I loved it sitting drinking coffee with her in her kitchen. I know I wanted to be in her kitchen <laughs> with both of you. No. <laughs> well, I'll have to invite you back when when she does the mole with okay. the with the lingua. For mm. now, we can all take a virtual tour and go along with Jesse on <laughs> KSAT.com. Jesse, thanks so much. Do. Thank you. All right, thank you. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.